empties in Blender. In this video we'll be introducing the concept of an empty. Essentially an empty is a null object that has no geometry. They can be used as a handle to control other objects, used as a parent object for a group of objects, and we'll be dealing with that very shortly. They also have many other uses that we won't dive into right at this moment, but will when we need them in the course. So let's hop over into Blender. So let's open up a new file in Blender and we get the default cube in the scene. Now I'm just going to get rid of that because I'm not going to use that at all. And let's create our first empty. So you add an empty much like you would do a mesh object. So you could use the add menu on the 3D editor header or just go shift and A. And well, it's, that's fortunate, my mouse was directly over it. So an empty, and you can see there are eight different types of empty. Now essentially they all do a very similar thing, but depending on the application that you're doing, you may want a different shape or a different type of empty, just so it's more descriptive of the type of control you're going to have. So for instance, if you wanted a single arrow, if it was a directional control you were using, you can see here that this single arrow is great and we can scale it up, rotate it round, and we can say the object is pointing that way. And then when we move the arrow round, um, we can control an object based upon its direction. Very, very powerful. So there are lots of different options for your empty, but essentially you go into the add menu and go ahead and add an empty. Now you cannot create any geometry from that. They, there's no editing them in that sense, but you can use them later on to control lots of different things. And we'll be doing that very soon with our chest set. Right, so in the spirit of keeping it lean, we need to do some things now. We need to append the bishop into our chest seam to see what it looks like as a whole. Check everything is in the right proportion. And then start filling up our board. We're going to create the white pawns. Link, duplicate our bishops and pawns. That's important rather than just duplicating because we want it to apply across uh, any changes we make, we want them to apply across the bishops that we made and the pawns, so we don't have to repeat ourselves. And then we'll get on to managing our models in this scene. Let's hop over into Blender. Right, so we're done with this for the moment. Let's go and open up our chess scene. So it should be in my recent, yep, chess scene. And this is where we left it before. So go ahead and open up your chess scene blend now where we brought our primary white pawn in. Right, let's go and append our bishop. So we're gonna go file, append, and go find your low poly bishop. And in object, we want to select the low poly bishop. There we go, that's in our scene. Let's just move that about. I'm gonna constrain it to the X, Y axis so it doesn't disappear through the floor by holding down Shift and Z. Just gonna pop it next to our pawn, zoom in a little and have a look at it in context. Excellent, that looks really good. Okay, so now we've got that in there, we need to start with, we need a duplicate of this and we need another seven duplicates of our pawn. Now before we go ahead and start messing around with our pawns and duplicating them lots, I want to show you a really neat trick. Well, it's not really a trick, it's an operation that will save you a shed load of time later on when you're doing very repetitive tasks where an array modifier might not be of use to you. So for instance, if we wanted to duplicate this pawn, and it was a linked duplicate of course, uh, we'd do Alt and D, and we have our pawn here. Now, if I just lock that to the X, Y axis and just place it down there, for instance, um, if I was more accurate, it would be better. So I can look down here on the vector where it is and probably six and minus six. There we go, smack bang in the middle of that square now. Um, if I simply hold down shift at the same time as R, it repeats the last operation. So shift and R will lay down another linked pawn and again we'll do another linked pawn. And you can do that as many times as you like, it's a very powerful operation. Okay guys, it's challenge time. I'd like you to fill out the board. So remember to link duplicate the pawns and two bishops 
only making the white pieces at the moment. We'll do something later on to create all of the black ones. Now place them in the right starting position on the board. Now you, you may have to refer to reference material in order to make sure the board's at the right orientation for us. And then finally create an empty called white pieces. Pause the video now and give that a go. Okay guys, welcome back. Let's hop straight back over into Blender. Right, so I've duplicated down here and I don't want to do that in this case. So fortunately I've got some undo buffer I can exploit. Now I know that this pawn was placed exactly in the right place. We're mucking about with it I think. Let's just go up here. Uh, no, not quite. It's But I can set it back to zero and zero here. And then it's right bang in the middle of the board. Then I can turn on snapping because we're using whole units and I can move it to the right position here and down a little so it's around here. Uh, before I go any further though, I know that from reference material that a, uh, the white, white side of the board has the black square in the left corner and, the right, and a white square in the right corner. So that would be this way round or that way round. So at the moment I'm about to set it up playing across the wrong way on the board. Um, so I'm going to move that down to there and across to here. And that should be smack bang in the middle. Whole numbers here, exactly what I want to see over in the transport. Right, so the next thing I want to do is duplicate linked this pawn here. So that's Alt and D, and there we go, he's linked. And I can see that the Z is changing down in the lower left. So I do want to lock the Z axis so it's not moving. And I just want to place it there. Brilliant. Now to do the next step, I'm simply going to repeat that operation by holding down Shift and R. There we go, one, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. Uh, of course, what we're looking at here is a couple of, in the outliner here, there's lots of corrections to do. So perhaps before I do the re repeating, I should have renamed it. So fortunately with the undo thing, we can do that relatively quickly. I'm just going to name that white pawn for the moment. I'm going to rename it. Um, then I'm going to duplicate it, lock it to the Z axis and move it across. Then I'm going to hold down Shift and R to repeat that process. That's much better. All the way down to there. Brilliant. And then finally, we can do the bishop again. Now I'm not quite sure where the bishop is. So again, I'm just going to lock it to whole numbers here. I'm going to type in 0, 0, and 0 there. That appeared above the board. I've managed to type nine. That's not very clever of me. It's next to zero, of course. And there we go. So it's a zero, zero, zero. Now with snapping turned on and increments, we can move that down. And oh, where does that go? It goes there, doesn't it? Uh, knight, rook, knight, bishop. That's fine. And goes back one. And then again, a linked duplicate. Lock to the z-axis. Move it across to there. And perfect. So that chessboard's really coming on now with the pieces on it. And we've got all of our stuff set up. Now this hierarchy along here is starting to get a bit messy. I wonder if there's something we can do about that. And speaking about the hierarchy, I have noticed that I don't have an empty yet. Oh, almost forgot that bit of the challenge. So of course, I need to go add empty. Now I've got a choice of empties here and I'm not quite sure which one I'm going to pick. I think for the purpose of this, I am simply going to pick a plane axis. It doesn't really matter. It's not going to be much in the way of any use to us. And where it's positioned, we can sort that out later. Uh, we do need to name it though, so I'm going to rename that. I'm going to name it White Pieces. There we go. So that's all ready for us later on. Now we will deal with this hierarchy and organize this a bit in the next couple of lectures, so don't worry about that for the moment. But what I would like to see is how you guys are getting on, so please share your results so far in the discussions, and I will see you in the next lecture. Take care.